What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of... Whenever News. For Never News, as my daughter said. The only news source that provides anything and everything anime manga related, and we don't bore you. We don't bore you. We don't bore you. We don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it, baby. Let's go! Still moving on. Still moving on. This is for my day ones. This is for my day one. Come on. And before we get started, if you would hit that subscribe button and that bell, I'd greatly appreciate it. It'll help me out. It'll help you out. We win win with it. So hit the buttons, baby. And also check out my album, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, out now on all streaming platforms. You can listen to it on my YouTube channel and in general, everywhere else. Also, my website, timroosevelt.com. You can pre order my upcoming EP, He Rose, as well as the vinyl edition for The Rise. Or you could even purchase the digital version of The Rise of Tim Roosevelt out now. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, people, and first stories on the docket because normally it'd be like one story, but I felt like there was just a lot of different transitioning things happening for several different manga. So, yeah, the first story is about, uh, or first stories, is about a lot of different manga that are either ending, heading towards climaxes. They were at the climax, and now they're officially ending because, yeah, what comes up must go down. If it's alive, it must go the other way. Because what goes up must come down, and even though some of these are really awesome unfortunately things must come to an end so i guess let's start off with uh one of the ones that is still currently in weekly shonen jump magazine apparently mission yozakura family by hitsuji gandaira is quote-unquote approaching the final stage of the story according to the latest author comment in volume 20 of the series so essentially one of the ones that you know has been going for a long time in shonen jump despite the fact that it hasn't had its anime yet uh, um, it hasn't debut or whatnot. It's definitely been, you know, I don't want to say a pillar, but it's been rocking out in Weekly Shonen Jump. So the fact that the author has announced that it is approaching the final stage of the story, I'm willing to bet probably, not probably, 99.9% .9 chance that Mission Yozakura family will not make it out of 2024 intact. It'll probably end anywhere from now through maybe summertime, I'm going to give it, or probably whenever that anime debuts, because that's been, you know, the new norm, so to speak, when it comes to manga. The manga ends now and the anime continues the story where back in the days it was the opposite. The anime would just kind of come for a season or two, but the manga would keep going go read the manga. So things have been flipped into a reverse order and it seems to be the case with Mission Yozakura Family because it's approaching the final stage of the story. But that's not all. We spoke about last week that the Ichinose Family Deadly Sins manga was coming to its climax. And now this year's 49th issue of Shueisha's Weekly Shonen Jump published the final chapter of Tizen 5's The Ichinose Family Deadly Sins manga on Monday. Shueisha will publish the manga's fifth compiled book on December 4th and the sixth and final volume will ship on March 4th. Uh, after nearly a year of serialization, Tizen 5's suspenseful family drama manga, The Ichinose Family Deadly Sins, has come to an end with its 48th chapter. The Ichinose Family's Deadly Sins began in Weekly Shonen Jump's 50th issue on November 14, 2022, as part of a new four manga push by the magazine of the four only Cypher Academy remains in serialization and the Ichinose Family Deadly Sins has been collected into four volumes so far with a fifth on its way in Japan December 5th and I'm gonna be honest with you um, like I said last week because again for the most part when you hear that something is heading towards its climax unless it's like a big dog like Naruto or Bleach usually it'll end probably the week after that or the, again the exceptions are like the big dogs where Naruto had like a five chapter countdown likewise with Bleach it had like a you know few chapter countdown as well I want to say it might have even been five like Naruto but you know the, the big dogs get those big countdowns but if it's a newbie like Ichinose Family Deli Sins again they give you about a week in advance of like hey it's ending next week and it's like holy cow yo what are you doing to me however I will say that from everything I've heard and from what I read it seems as though the Ichinose Family Deli Sins wasn't cancelled it wasn't like yo it's not popular it was meant to be a short term serialization maybe it went a little bit longer than what the author had initially planned because ultimately the manga definitely felt like it had a lot of strange and unclear plot twists throughout uh but yeah it's ending and i'm looking forward to hopefully it getting an anime because if it does get an anime even if it's a 12 episode season i think it'll definitely be still 
palatable to be a big hit like i don't feel like this is a case of like samurai 8 where you know it's like gone in the wind masashi kishimoto's latest attempt at getting a manga serialized or getting a manga to become a hit shall i say i think ichinose family deadly sins can very well still get an anime and still go on to do great things even with the short amount of chapters but again only time will tell i mean it's been a pretty big hit it sold hundreds of thousands of copies or it has hundreds of thousands of copies in circulation and it's only four or five volumes in i think that's success in and of itself but as i said there's a bunch of manga coming to an end coming to climaxes and we got another on the block of coming to an end with jojo's bizarre adventure spin-off novel mugen no o ends on december 19th so this is a spin-off novel not a manga the official twitter account of shueisha's jojo magazine announced on thursday that junjo shindo's mugen no o the infinite king a spin-off novel of hirohiko araki's jojo's bizarre adventure manga will end in its third chapter in the magazine's winter 2023 issue which is scheduled for release on December 19th. The novel story set in an era when the word Stan did not exist centers on Lisa Lisa as she explores the mysteries of Stan occurrences. The spinoff novel was included in the launch issue of Jojo Magazine March 2022. The magazine's launch marked the 35th anniversary of Araki's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Manga. So yeah, um, I initially thought, to be honest with you, that this story was about the spinoff manga. So spinoff novel, eh, I don't think people are going to be broken up about it over here in the west because how many people are really following it if you are let me know and let me know if it uh, reached a good and proper conclusion or or it's heading that way at the very least then another big big one this is the i think the biggest of all of the stories we've gotten thus far in terms of a series that is getting canceled very early because th this isn't like the ichinose family deadly sins or even mission yozakura where it's like yeah they kind of have you know things set forth for how they're ending or how they ended or whatnot this one is a straight up cancellation because ice head Gill by Ikuo Hachia has ended this week with chapter 20 in Weekly Shonen Jump issue number 50. I talked about this series when it first launched. I made a video over on my other channel kind of saying that maybe there's a potential for this to be the next big thing. Who knows? It looks like it was a mixture of like a Demon Slayer in a way mixed with like Hunter Hunter. It had a lot of variables. Unfortunately, about six or seven chapters in, even me personally, I dropped it because it started losing any sort of grasp of where it was going and it kind of just felt a little bit slow and it really wasn't hitting the way it felt with at the release the first couple of chapters so i kind of saw the writings on the wall to begin with so it ending now with chapter 20 it's a shame but i hope this author can come back with something a little bit more exciting than this one because his art is pretty decent and it seemed like he had some cool stuff to show us but it didn't really work out with this one so hopefully homie returns at some given point and it also said that icehead gill will be releasing its final volume 2 december 4th 2023 in addition equal hachia will be be publishing a completely new one shot in the upcoming jump giga 2024 spring i love that aspect of what jump has been doing recently and not even recently because they did this as well back in the days where like um yuki tabata and horikoshi uh regarding like them going from sensei noboge to my hero academia and hungry joker to black clover where they give them opportunities in other magazines like publish a one shot and let's see how people react to that because we know you're a dope artist or a dope author or both um so seems to be the case that that's really dope that even though this journey is coming to an end he has an opportunity still in jump giga to impress people maybe that one shot will be something huge and he'll get another shot another opportunity at releasing something so um hats off to homie it's always a sad thing to see uh you know shonen jump author's dreams come crashing especially when you have series like uh what was the name of that one series with the it was like with the little girl with horns or whatnot that it was a massive hit and then the author just disappeared off the face of the earth like yeah then we got this dude that he's trying his hardest and gets thrown out of the magazine 20 chapters in but again this series wasn't the greatest in my opinion and then we got another thing of uh we spoke about this months back on forever news here uh, regarding neuro rise of the yokai clan having a spin-off series or a sequel spin-off pseudo in a way uh neuro rise of the yokai clan kage and this is the volume cover and this short-term sequel ran for four issues in ultra jump this year and now all chapters have been compiled in the volume so I want to say probably ended fairly recently and now they're putting it in a cover and I ain't gonna lie the main character because I seen a little bit of the anime of this back in the day and I thought it was pretty cool and the manga's art was amazing from what I've seen so it's dope that they're still doing stuff like this it seems as though certain authors and you know we spoke about this before but it definitely feels as though certain authors have their main hit and unfortunately not necessarily that they're not 
capable of replicating another you know massive hit but things just kind of always revert back to that it's the same thing with like massage kishimoto it always reverts back to naruto and boruto and all that stuff it seems like with the author of Nura, despite that homie has tried a couple of different times to do different manga it kind of always reverts back to you know people wanting more of that Nura rise of the yokai clan his original big hit but there you have it, people. Those are all the manga that are and novels that are coming to an end, are hitting their climaxes, are about to end, etc. etc. Let me know what you think. Comment section below. Fill up the comments. It helps. Moving forward, we got a couple of pieces of Dragon Ball Dragon Ball News. For starters, Dragon Ball's new fiscal report proves One Piece is coming. For Goku, I don't like the sounds of that, though. What are you, what are you trying to say here? Like, <laughs> if we're being honest, One Piece kind of already, in certain regards, surpassed Dragon Ball at the release manga sales-wise and popularity in Japan. It has surpassed Dragon Ball, but in other avenues, it is leaps and bounds away from ever touching Dragon Ball, but let's see what this has to say. It's been quite the year for Dragon Ball and One Piece. While the former just announced its next anime, One Piece has been thriving with several major projects, which... I ain't gonna lie, that just made me think like, yo, if they're doing this with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball ended in 1996, the with or the GT anime ended in like 1996, I think the original manga ended in like 94, 95, and we're getting brand new original, what makes you think One Piece is going to end with the end of the manga, dog? We're gonna have like millions of One Piece spinoffs down the road, so keep that in mind. From its latest movie to its Netflix live action hit, One Piece is sailing smoothly these days, and a new fiscal report confirms Luffy is coming after Son Goku. The update comes from Bandai Namco as the company just released its 2024 fiscal year update for quarter two. It was there, Dragon Ball came in second place in terms of IP sales and One Piece made a massive jump to challenge Goku in third place. Right here we got the list that says Bandai Namco fiscal year 2024 second quarter. That's July through September. Dragon Ball is number two, beaten slightly by Gundam. The real story is One Piece getting a huge jump thanks to toys and hobby merchandise so at the top we have it says sales of ip group wide and let's see at number one so at the end of 2024.3 it shows that mobile suit gundam with 140.0 is at number one with dragon ball at number two with 133 and one piece at number three with 100.0 so very interesting and then what comes at number four let's see because they're reporting on all this but then way back in the distance is common rider at number four then at number five is Naruto. Okay, they don't want to mention the, our, our Naruto, but Naruto is top five, baby. I'm just saying, like, why, why are we sleeping on Naruto? You know what I'm saying? There's other stuff on there. Naruto's beating out Pretty Precure. You know what I'm saying? Pretty Cure. Naruto's beating out Super Sentai. Naruto's beating out a couple of different, you know what I'm saying? Come on, show some love to the, the boy Uzumaki. But that's on Groupwide. And then sales of IP, toys and hobby business, Japan. The ending results, it has Mobile Suit Gundam with 65.5. Uh, One Piece at number two here with 52.5. And Kamen Rider at number three with 23.0. And Dragon Ball at number four with 21.0. is Nar Oh, wow. Naruto is not there on the sales of IP, toys, and hobby. Very interesting. It wipes Pokemon, I think, replaced it. Very fascinating. But, I mean, it's Pokemon, so need I say more. Very interesting stuff. According to Quarter 2 Breakdown, Mobile Suit Gundam was the top IP earner for Bandai Namco. It brought in 72.6 billion yen, while Dragon Ball pulled 68.4 billion yen. As for One Piece, well, it did numbers with 57.1 billion yen in the first half of the 2024 fiscal year. This is compared to its 35.9 billion haul last year. So clearly Luffy's making bank. As for Namco Bandai's toy and merchandise sales, One Piece made a major push. Mobile Suit Gundam took first place with 34.7 billion yen, and One Piece came second after beating out Dragon Ball. Luffy's crew earned 30 billion yen in the first half of 2024, while Dragon Ball has done 12.2. It seems the recent publicity One Piece has earned has translated into merchandise sales. So you know Bandai Namco is glad for it. I mean... From the Netflix live action, which 110% gave One Piece a massive boost, Gear 5th in the anime, the manga's egghead arc being solidified as absolute 
greatness, the card game taking off, One Piece is <laughs> having a renaissance and a half. I thought, you know, after Marine Ford, after that big 37 million sales in one year, it was never going to be like that again. And boy, has One Piece standed the test of time. After all, One Piece has had a renaissance as of late. That's crazy, yo. That's my line right there, dog. The manga has been making waves as a creator. A Choro Oda began its final act. As for the One Piece anime... Things are going well as Toei Animation pulled all the stops while animating the Wano Country Saga. Plus, Netflix's hit live-action take on One Piece earned rave reviews from, from fans globally. The show, which debuted at the end of August, is still one of Netflix's most-watched titles. One Piece has already been greenlit for Season 2, so Oda's IP is only about to get bigger. And of course, that means Bandai Namco has more money to make so this was a dragon ball story but one piece kind of was the you know underneath star of that story as well because one piece has made some great strides to being massively popular but in light of dragon ball stories we got another dragon ball story in terms of something that i feel is way overpriced and i want you guys to let me know what you think about this next one because dragon ball z opens pre-orders for a new vinyl collection dragon ball has made big waves this year at new york comic-con as the shonen franchise announced a new anime project in 2024 dragon ball daima while super is continuing in its manga releasing new chapters on a monthly basis even though it's a re-adaptation of a movie that we saw a hundred million years ago and we don't care anymore one vinyl collection is giving shonen fans the opportunity to re-examine the past Dra dragon ball z's Best Collection collects 15 of the biggest tracks that the anime adaptation has to offer and pre-orders are now available. When it comes to Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Daima takes place in an interesting time. We don't care about Dragon Ball Daima. Let's move on. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Best Collection will arrive December 15th. Retailing for, are you ready for it? I don't think you're ready for this. 99.99. You can pre-order the vinyl set by clicking, well... Unfortunately, the upcoming vinyl won't have Rock the Dragon or any of that stuff. But here's the list for $99.99, pretty much $100, which in retrospect, it's not the most expensive because I seen like some other artists that was selling their vinyls for like $60. So I want to take it back. I don't think that this is super overpriced, but it is a pretty hefty price tag because uh, it comes with two vinyls, I believe, on the first vinyl or one vinyl double-sided. I'm not sure if it's two vinyls or one vinyl double-sided. Uh, on vinyl side one, you get Cha. You get exceptional, you get battle, ikusa, whole journey of light, the strongest rival, and hero. You're the hero. And then on side two, because honestly, out of that whole thing, the only one that I recognize by name is, of course, Chala Head Chala. Uh, then you got Mind Power Key, Extreme, Blue Wind Hope, The Burning, Soul, Rising High, another one that I'm familiar with, We Got a Power. That song is awesome. That's the second opening of Dragon Ball Z when you see, like, you know, Gohan, Great Saiyan Man, and all that. And We Were Angels. So. Yeah, for 100 bucks, some really old music. Let me look at the collection. Okay, it looks as though it comes with two sets. And to be honest with you, or two vinyls. And to be honest with you, rarity-wise and value-wise, this is something that it, it costs 100 bucks now. In probably 15 years, this is going to run for like $1,500, $2,000. So there's that. This is a definitely a very nice investment. Look at the, the art on that one. Like the best collection of all the Super Saiyans from Dragon Ball Z, from Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Trunks. Uh, the art is just gorgeous. The vinyls are orange with Dragon Balls. And, oh my god. And then Shenron. I ain't going to lie. High key. Oh, and it's the four star. I ain't going to lie. High key. I kind of want to. I might have to hit that pre-order. I ain't going to lie. Like it's a hefty price tag. But again... Investment wise, this is going to easily get you a couple of thousand bucks within the next couple of years. So look out for it. Moving forward, this was a story that I wanted to bring to people's attention because every now and then I guess I got to remind anime and manga fans, not necessarily you guys, because y'all, for the most part, you know, my community is very strong, very goodwilled, all of that jazz. But for the Cretans out there that may come across this, or in general, if you know somebody that is acting a fool on social media and harassing and bothering creatives, especially people that like I don't know, this just, it boggles my mind. Because I spoke about this on my other channel. But essentially, there has been some reports coming in that over the past week, and this is from the, I believe, author of the Naruto spinoff novels, the Red Student series to, in particular. Uh, the author came out and said that they have been harassed in many different ways, but especially via hateful emails regarding the novels. Let's just quickly read. It's from June Esaka. 
This past week, someone has sent over 100 hateful mails to my original works, with demanding all my original works be cancelled immediately because I'm the worst writer. My novelization spoiled the original contents badly. I know people have the right to express their honest opinion, and as the writer of the novelization, I have a responsibility to listen to negative opinions as well as positive ones. However, recently, some people have gone too far. My novelizations like the Red Student series, which I freaking love, are just spinoffs. If you don't like it, you can ignore it. I hope you're enjoying your favorite things in your comfortable way. That's another thing of saying, yo, why don't you enjoy something you enjoy and leave my shit alone. My English skills might not be enough to address this delicately. Sorry if I'm being impolite. You're not being impolite because I also saw they were attacking this person's child. They were saying all sorts of just disgusting things. Don't be like this. You know, I, I've addressed this in so many different occasions throughout the years of anime and manga fans that don't know how to act. It stigmatizes anime and manga fans. Like, look at these losers. Look at what they're doing over a novel. Like, yo, 100% what Jun Asaka said is correct. Uh, this is a spinoff you can ignore it even more so you can get a life you know what I'm saying like you can go outside opposed to doing something like this and again I'm not saying this to anime and manga fans I'm saying this to people that think it's okay to do stuff like this and harass this person with over a hundred hateful emails over a novel that came out like five years ago at that four or five years ago the red student stuff or whatnot over there in Japan and overall is good it's some of the best Naruto stories we've had in a long time have you watched the anime adaptations of like the Sasuke Retsuit and stuff, it's freaking phenomenal. Have you seen the adaptation into the manga stuff? This story is great. It's some of the best Naruto related stuff. And I'm talking about the original Naruto series. It's some of the best stuff we've had in a long time. To be doing stuff like this, I gotta stress so badly as somebody that loves anime and manga has been one of the many that have helped to propel anime and manga to the heights it's been over the last few years. Get a life and stop harassing creatives for no reason. I hope this message reaches those that uh, enjoy that type of behavior because it's not right. It's not cool. And yeah, there you go. Leave June and Sokka alone because the Naruto rest of the novels were freaking amazing. I love them. And realistically, you shouldn't be bothering people for no reason. Moving forward, I got a couple of pieces of news regarding Mafia Studios. Seems like they're in the news every week, uh, but that's okay because, you know, it's one of the biggest studios out right now, for better or worse, shall I say. And for starters, Yuri on Ice changed Mafia's trajectory, says the studio's CEO. Oh, Studio Mappa has become one of the biggest anime studios in the world today. This year alone, the production house has released major installments in TV series such as Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, Hell's Paradise, and Vinland Saga. In a recent interview, Mappa president Manabu Otsuka discussed a number of topics when it comes to both the studio and the anime industry as a whole, noting that one particular anime had a major effect on the studio's future. Studio Mappa, for those who may not know, was first established in 2011. Created by a number of animators that were previously working at Studio Madhouse, the production studio has taken the opportunity to make a name for itself thanks to its animation quality and the sheer breadth of projects that Mappa is working on at any given time. Most recently, Mappa has made a lot of headlines thanks to the finale of Attack on Titan, while the second season of Jujutsu Kaisen marches on with the Shibuya Incident arc. In a recent interview, the current president of Mappa, Manabu Otsuka, said, we had a complex that we didn't have any hits and didn't know how to make them. First time we had any fruit was when Yuri on Ice was broadcasted. The fate of MAPPA as a company changed. So they were insecure essentially at what was happening and how the studio wasn't popping off. And then Yuri on Ice changed everything. I would throw an argument there that, yeah, it was co-production with Studio Madhouse, but they were part of a very big hit with, I think was a season three, season four, one of the, the last seasons of Hajime no Ippo. They did co-production on that and maybe they didn't get the bells and whistles and accolades for their participation in that. Studio Madhouse was a part of it, you know, it was a collaboration, but that was a big hit nonetheless. So I just got to throw that in there. If you haven't seen Yuri on Ice, you could catch all the episodes on Crunchyroll. Here's how the streaming service describes the MAPPA series. Yuri on Ice, yeah, it's dudes on, I'm not a big fan of Yuri on Ice. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just eh, not for me. Uh, but then also MAPPA Studio CEO uh, commented on the pool of popularity versus prestige which at the end of the day i'm very interested to see what homie has to say considering the fact that popularity seems to be a very big deal for them based off of for example he just talked about it with yuri on ice that was a big moment for them and on top of that their motto is hey let's slave these animators so we could get these popular titles going so we could catch up to all of the big animation studios out there so just throwing that in there studio mapa has released some of the biggest anime projects of 2023 that is facts on november 4th the studio will end its time with attack on titan it already has releasing the final episode of the anime to the world in a recent interview, current president of the studio, Manobu Otsuka, discussed MAPPA's approach 
when it came to how it would pick the anime stories it was looking to bring to life. To start the interview, Oscar discussed his mindset when he was originally chosen to be MAPPA's second president. As the studio opened up its doors in 2011, thanks to one project being passed on by legendary studio Madhouse, as I started to understand various numbers related to studio management, my interest became, how can a company that makes animation survive as a company and grow? So in 2016, Maruyama asked me if I would like to become president. When I accepted the job, the first thing I thought about was surviving and continuing to create. MAPPA's president then touched upon how one of their earliest works in this corner of the world had received some serious accolades, but Manabu recognized that the studio would also need far-reaching appeal to increase its business. It was great that we were able to release a hit work. But the money that went into the studio when we were contracting out simple production work was very small. When I say that it was low, I mean the amount of money that went into the studio was very small compared to the business scale of the work as a whole. Our income is small. If we don't improve this, we feel that it will be impossible for us to survive as a company and grow strongly. So from 2016 onwards, we will continue to produce anime while focusing on production conditions that will bring in more money to the studio. Aiming to maintain the environment, around 2018, we started businesses other than anime production, such as rights and events. This year alone saw the release of not only Attack on Titan, but also the second season of Jujutsu Kaisen, Vinland Saga, and the premiere of Hell's Paradise. Yo, they got a lot on their plate. With 2024 seeing plenty of projects already confirmed by MAPPA, it will be interesting to see what other properties that the studio will take on in the future. And in essence, it sounds like Studio MAPPA is really going the long haul to try and make it. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to make it to where they're the top dogs and whatnot. But I always got to stress, yo, that's great. Ambition is awesome. But Studio MAPPA treats your employees better because... Because, yeah, it's only a matter of time until the animators say, screw this, I'm done, and Studio MAPPA will fall very hard. Moving forward, in case you don't know, Hulu has been somewhat in the grasp of Disney. For example, we've had a couple of anime, big, big titles, have come to the platforms and ultimately be essentially either exclusive to Hulu or in different parts of the world exclusive to Disney+, Plus, like Bleach Styles and Blood War, latest Tokyo Revengers stuff. Like, yeah, Disney has been making an aim for anime and utilizing the Hulu platform to broadcast a lot of these titles. Like over here in the West, Tokyo Revengers and Bleach are Hulu, but they're owned by Disney+, Plus for the most part. However, it seems as though Disney is taking it a step further because Disney set to acquire Comcast's remaining stake in Hulu for $8.6 billion. So pretty soon, Disney is about to buy out Hulu. I wonder how close is Disney to having a monopoly in many different avenues. They're getting real close to having a monopoly. And this is why I always stress that it's good to have competition. Even though, you know, a lot of these platforms be on some bullshit. But it's good that we have a Disney and we have a Netflix and we have a Crunchyroll and we have an Amazon Prime. And it's good that, you know, anime is being distributed on multiple different places. I understand that it's a little bit difficult because maybe you want to watch a certain show but you don't have that platform or whatnot but if everything was under disney which is what it looks like disney is trying to do just own the freaking world it's gonna get really bad so i'm not a big fan of disney acquiring the entirety of hulu because now hulu is under disney's thumb it says here cnn business reported on thursday that disney will acquire comcast's 33 percent stake in the streaming service hulu for eight point six billion dollars this year after this disney will own the entirety of the streaming service comcast stated we look forward to the appraisal process and the determination of hulu's fair market value which we expect will reflect the extraordinary value of the business cnn business reported that the companies will complete the formal appraisal process in 2024 disney plus raised the price of its ad free tier from 10.99 to 13.99 per month on october 12th while the ad free tier for hulu arose from 1499 to 1799 the subscription for ad free disney plus and hulu bundled together costs 20 dollars pretty much 1999 as of september 6 the prices of ad supported tiers remain unchanged and disney plus added an ad supported tier in december 2022 and i'll be honest with you i don't pay much for hulu i don't know if, i can't remember if i got it on some sort of deal or some bundle but with ads i pay like i think two bucks a month for hulu so again i don't know how the hell i got that uh deal to be honest with you but i'm totally fine with having ads and paying way less money i mean yeah i'm paying with my attention so it's not technically free but commercial once in a while ain't that bad just don't let it morph your opinions and you know program you so to speak and with that being said moving forward studio ghibli uh, decided to take their ball and go home when it comes to having their account 
on Twitter. Well, formerly Twitter, known as X. Yo, let me know in the comment section below. Keep it all the way real with me. Do you still address it as Twitter or have you started to call it X? I'll be honest with you. It's still 100% Twitter for me. Like, I recognize that it's X and maybe eventually once it becomes the super norm to call it X, I'll call it X. Either that or I could imagine Elon Musk probably selling it off here in the near future because it's not seemingly working out very well for him but yeah i still call it twitter but either way studio ghibli plans to delete its x aka twitter account asap it seems like twitter is about to lose another big name presence in the aftermath of elon musk's takeover of the social media platform things are on edge for twitter with ad revenue down more than 50 percent and monthly users in a slump x is bleeding love now, Studio Ghibli has confirmed its plans to leave the site, and the company plans to shutter its page ASAP. As it turns out, Studio Ghibli will be closing its official X account in less than 24 hours. So, damn, it's probably already closed, that means. This means Studio Ghibli will not be sharing behind-the-scenes goodies with fans through X, and the decision to exit X comes after the launch of Miyazaki's new film. As of November 3rd at midnight, so yeah, it's gone, Studio Ghibli's official Twitter page was closed. They wanted to thank all of the people who supported this account, which began three years ago in preparation for the premiere of director Hao Miyazaki's How Do You Live? We sincerely thank you. The film will continue to screen through the year end and the new year holidays, Studio Ghibli shared with fans online. Based on this letter, it seems Ghibli is leaving X on good terms. The company is famously traditional when it comes to marketing and social media has never factored into its ploys. Studio Ghibli only launched an official page on X years ago to promote Miyazaki's upcoming film and now that it's launched in Japan, well, the page is ready to shut down. According to recent reports, Ghibli is just one of the many pages to turn away from X back in October 2022, Musk closed the deal to buy Twitter after making a $44 billion bid for the site. Oh my God. After failing to back out of the deal, Musk's oversight of X has been fraught with controversy and the drama has impacted X's overall stats. According to Variety, global use of X has dived 15% while using the United States was down 18% year over year. As for advertising, a number of top name investors pulled advertisements from X in light of its controversies, which dropped its ad spending by about 54%. That's over half. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm not even that big of a fan of X personally. I've kind of backed off as well. So I might be a part of that percentage and it's nothing to do with politics, political wise. Um, it's just as I've gotten older, little real world story or real world talk real quick in Forever News. Um, as I've gotten older, I just realized that Twitter slash X just brings so much drama and chaos to everybody's lives that uh, partake in it. So I personally, made the choice to not really be on there as much um you know everybody's free to do what they want but twitter has just you know fostered one of the most toxic environments i've seen on social media um so i'm not really on there honestly if you want to find me a little bit more active on any platform for that matter you could probably catch me somewhat active over on threads that's instagram's new twitter-esque community and you're probably thinking well why you know if you're saying twitter is giving you drama why go to a twitter clone so to speak and honestly just the environment of what i've seen thus far over on threads has not been any of that it's been very you know uplifting positivity i guess a lot of that has to do with my algorithms over there but yeah and you can follow me on threads i'll have something over here if you want to follow me on threads because um, i'm having a pretty good time over there where i post but salute to studio ghibli standing on what they feel they're out Okay, next up, shout outs to Jose underscore Ke. He's the dude that provides the top 50 best selling manga of the week lists every single week. Shout outs to homie. Um, because he recently posted a bunch of different, I guess, graphs showcasing the sales, rise, falls, all that good stuff for several different series. We're going to talk about three of them here. And then Spy Family will be whenever we get to the Spy Family stories later on in the episode. But for starters, let's take a look at this is Black Clover Sales Evolution all the way up to the latest volume, volume 35. So we got here, let's see. Uh, first week sales, <sighs> yeah, Black Clover has. So you, you can see from volume one all the way, I, I still can't believe that. Volume 15 and 16 was the peak of the series. And at that point it was at 5 million sales. And then it just, it, it was a free for all drop. And this is probably one of the main reasons why Jump decided to remove it from the magazine because 
Black Clover, the only time it kind of had an uprising seemingly since then was back in like volume 27. It went up slightly, but then it just kept on, you know, free falling. So unfortunately, this is a clear indication as to what has, why the stuff has happened with Black Clover of getting it out of Shonen Jump and all of that jazz because you could see that, yeah, it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's even at, at this particular point, every volume is selling less and less than the last one. We're at the point where volume 35 is sitting at probably about 120,000, somewhere in that ballpark, 150, 120. And it's just not the greatest showing. And it's unfortunate because I've always stood by Black Clover. And ultimately, I think the series is at probably 20 million sales somewhere in that ballpark but yeah this is a clear indication why black clover you know has essentially ended in shonen jump it's just not it's been a free for all for uh, the fact that they allowed it to stay around for as long as it did shout outs to shonen jump you know if i could be critical of some of the decisions they make of canceling series they've allowed black clover a manga that from volume 15 for 20 volumes has not had a jump back up to where it was at volume 15. They still allowed it to go for 20 volumes after it peaked. They still allowed it to go. That's more than generous and definitely a showcase in that they really believed in Black Clover. And despite it not reaching the heights that they wanted it to be, which they've been on record saying they wanted it to be the next Naruto. It failed to be the next Naruto. They still allowed it to make a run. So shout outs to Yuki Tabata and Black Clover and Shonen Jump for giving it a fair shake and a fair opportunity. Um, but next we have Chainsaw Man. The second part of the series is not having quite the same impact as the first. Readership is slowing down at Jump Plus. It had an average of 5.5 million at May earlier this year, as well as the physical copies sales. Uh, so taking a look at this, you could clearly see that sales of uh, Chainsaw Man skyrocket after a certain point. Like it starts off slow, volume one, it has a gradual increase from volume one all the way till about volume nine. And from volume nine to 10, it goes from about 250 maybe 55,000 all the way up for volume 10 it goes to 400,000 and then volume 11 so you can definitely see between volumes 11 and 12 that's a year and seven months okay that's chainsaw man one ends with volume 11 if i'm not mistaken so that's where we have the clear peak of chainsaw man and then you can see the highest it went up to was volume 13 so chainsaw man part 2 definitely jumped even above the eclipsing moment which i want to say that's probably where the chainsaw man anime was running maybe around that particular point uh, because you definitely see an increase uh for volume 13 um but then you see especially to the latest volume volume 15 chainsaw man is on the decline and that's probably a lot to do with i think because the anime didn't do what they wanted it to do probably marketing has been pulled back on certain aspects also chainsaw man 2 a lot of people have not felt the same as they felt for chainsaw man 1 just being honest with you, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it introduced a secondary uh, protagonist with Asami Taka. A lot of people, they just, whether it's that she's a girl and boys, which Chainsaw Man, you know, I guess accumulated a lot of male readership. They just can't identify with a female, which I think that that's a lame excuse personally, because I think, you know, if it's a dope female character, who cares about identifying? You can still identify it of, hey, we're human, right? Uh, so I think that that played a factor, though, as far as like the writing going on top of the fact that a lot of the cast from Chainsaw Man, you know, the original Chainsaw Man up to volume 11 aren't really prevalent in Chainsaw Man 2 from volumes 12 and on. I think that strong cast that was built, their absence is very much so felt. And that's also a reason why sales and, you know, just interest in general has dipped significantly because uh, where we're at right now, we're pretty much going towards where we were volume 9. So Chainsaw Man... It's unfortunately on the decline. It had a very, I guess this is a tale of having a very strong start, an enormous, like abnormal strong start, and then falling very quickly because you can't recapture what that moment was of what it was at volumes 10 and 11. But regardless of what, salute to Chainsaw Man, one hell of a ride, and it's still going, and maybe things could pick back up. Again, look at what volume 13, and you know, it jumped up of even the peak of volume 11. It had a 50% increase i think so that's pretty dope and then we have the sales evolution of my hero academia all the way up to the latest volume volume 38 and my hero academia is a very different case from chainsaw man and black clover despite the narrative that the west has continued to push forth that my hero academia is dead nobody cares my hero academia right now is like kind of maybe it's 
slightly lower with the latest volume than some of the previous ones but it has just been even when it started to decline all the way back at like volume 26 you see it was dipping it goes right back up 27 28 29 30 you know it, it has like this small drop and then it goes right back up with my hero academia i would attribute a lot of this to the female readership that my hero academia has accumulated especially going back to the last movie with roadie i think it was my hero movie three if i'm not mistaken a lot of new readers came aboard from female readers that were you know they took interest into the series and i think that's definitely something that has helped the stagnating sales because again it was dropping and it continues to stay steady and that's probably another reason why kohei horikoshi has extended the manga beyond belief this Despite the fact that he was talking about ending it over a year ago, it was quote unquote supposed to end, you know, fast forward a year and a half, we're still going. And again, it's because of look at the success. Like these are the type of numbers like Chainsaw Man had abnormal. Oh, my God, this is crazy type of explosions in the beginning and then started to fall off. Black Clover had a steady up and a steady down. This one has just been steady. And this is the type of sales I think most people dream of to have where it's still floating very much so at, at its top you know what i mean like it's only a very small drop from what its peak was and its peak was not that long ago volume 33 was the peak so to see it only slightly drop my hero academia proves that slow and steady wins the race it's been staying pretty much just very successful you know shows that Season 5 did have, for better or worse, which is fascinating because it seems as though J Japan, they don't really care about what the West has to say about stuff because despite the fact that we all had a problem with Season 5, Season 5 helped the manga to go even higher. Again, Volume 33, I'm not sure when that came out, if that was alongside its film. Well, okay, no. Movie 3, it says right here, came out with Volume 31 and that made it go up. And I'm imagining that Movie 3 helped all of those yeah those movies that's why they're not stopping with those movies that's why when the next movie comes out it's probably going to go up as well the my hero academia the movie and they're going to keep it going horikoshi sees at the end of the day the bag bro because if each one of these things is selling these amounts of copies or whatnot look six almost seven hundred thousand on volume 33 or whatnot horikoshi is getting the bag I don't blame them. I mean, yes, it's hurt the quality of the sales of what, or hurt the quality of the series, but homie's chasing a bag, and it is what it is. Salute to Horikoshi. Okay, people, I lied. We actually have sales evolution for one more. We got One Piece's sales evolution right here. We got, let's see, I believe we got from volume 50 all the way through volume 106. And while One Piece is definitely past its massive height heyday of i think the peak of one piece was right here let's see we're about to find out right this is crazy the peak of sales of one piece volume 65 let me do a quick due diligence what was volume 65 one piece let's see where were we wow really fishman island was the peak of one piece that is hilarious considering all of the hatred and vitriol shall i say that one piece of the fishman island arc gets that was the peak i think around that time maybe when the manga was doing that the anime was getting close to hitting the time skip so i think maybe that's due to the anime hitting the time skip at that particular point um but you're clearly seeing that one piece it's on the decline but decline for one piece again to put that into perspective that volume 65 was at like almost 3 million where we're at right now volume 106 is still at about 1.5 million sales so what, what are you going to get rid of a series or even try and rush a series out the door when it's still doing those crazy numbers sure it's not doing what it was doing at its peak but what you expect jordan to be michael jordan the amazing chicago bulls performer forever eventually he got to go to the magic you know what i'm saying it just is what it is so salute to Ichiro oda and one piece i'm just i'm in astonishment at some of these numbers it's just it's unbelievable and seeing like realistically the movies don't do much like it looks like one piece film red did some some justice for the series like going from volume 101 and 102 it jumped up significantly for volume 103 and on so it looks like they're gonna probably use those movies to pad out his success but i could definitely see jumping another 10 volumes one piece will be doing under a million if we keep on at this trajectory uh it'll definitely drop down but again it, that's a million you know what i'm saying like salute to h Roda. this is why they say one piece is one of the greatest and most successful of all time this chart is uh astronomical and if you take a close look from volumes 90 to 106 how much has it really dropped it's it's 
greatness. I ain't gonna lie. Shoutouts. It's inspiring. Uh, but then we got more One Piece stories here. Uh, for starters, Netflix's One Piece passes new ratings records. It's, uh, I'm sorry, folks. It's YouTube. It's not me. I would say whatever, but yeah, you gotta play the game. You can doubt a lot of things in this world, but you should never turn your nose up at One Piece. Since its debut, the manga has proven time and time again why it's so popular. We just took a clear indication look at why it's so popular. Uh, creator Ichiroda has spent the past few decades crafting the seafaring story, and One Piece has hit a new peak courtesy of its live action netflix series the show went live back in august and it seems the show is outperforming hits like dedication for the service the update comes courtesy of netflix itself as the site is giving stats updates on one piece since its debut after 10 weeks on air one piece has not yet left netflix's top 10 which says a lot about its popularity to date the series has more than 475 million hours viewed and 63.6 million viewers and yes the total number of viewers mentioned that have seen season one from top to bottom the number is most definitely impressive and the stats have given one piece a victory over syndication the latter series is another netflix original and its final season went live some weeks ago in its first five weeks occasion nabbed 312 million hours of playtime during that time frame one piece earned 430 million hours and this bump happened despite the show's shorter runtime of course one piece is not a stranger to breaking records when the show went live it had a bigger global opening on netflix than wednesday or the latest season of stranger things from north america to asia and latin america netflix users are all in on the live action adaptation of one piece so luckily the show has already been okayed for season two which that's just yet again another notch on the belt of one piece being successful and then we also have one piece creator reveals how eustace kid lost his arm well it's been hinted at for some time just who had taken kid's arm in one piece well it's been hinted at for some time just who had taken kid's arm in one piece i think it was hinted it was kaido Hiro oda has finally taken the opportunity to confirm which character is responsible for taking the arm of one of the worst generation's biggest members Kid was an instrumental part of the Straw Hat Pirates and the Wano Resistance Fighters brawl against Kaido and the Beast Pirates even making a recent appearance in the final saga. Even when an arm missing, Kid is still a force to be reckoned with in the Grand Line. One Piece has had a major 2023 thanks to not just the anime adaptations presenting Luffy's Gear 5th and the manga but the live action adaptation finding serious success on netflix while the second season's been confirmed yes we know all of that on a regular basis Hiro oda will take the opportunity to answer fans questions via new releases of the one piece manga oda recently took the chance to confirm that beckman of the red-haired pirates was in fact the one responsible for taking kids arm i'm super bugging i said kaido i'm bugging tripping which has been heavily hinted at for quite some time specifically oda states that yes it seems like it this is the pirate world where only the strong ones remain shanks the leader of the red hair pirates made quite the impression on one piece live action series but recently made a stunning return in the anime adaptation now set on finding the one piece treasure shonen fans are waiting to see the highly anticipated reunion between luffy and shanks that has been years in the making and i just want to say shout outs to shanks I hope he he obtains the treasure of One Piece. I know that's supposed to be Luffy, but can't they both be Pirate King and both get the treasure, you know? I know, I know. Okay, all right, all right. God damn, don't attack me. Let's move on. Moving forward, apparently there is a collaboration happening between Crunchyroll and Walmart. Now, I can tell you myself that over the last, I'd say maybe about month, month and a half, maybe two, I've definitely noticed that Crunchyroll has been expanding so much so that I've seen that there's now a section at my walmart for a few different apps i think there's a netflix section that i've seen i want to say there may have been a disney plus section something in that ballpark and definitely there's been a new anime filled section that has a big crunchyroll sign next to it, it says here crunchyroll x walmart partnership announcement these days you can find anime just about everywhere from streaming to stores the medium is everywhere and the anime fandom is adding to its ranks by the hour now it looks like walmart is gearing up to embrace anime in a big way and it will be doing so with help from the team at Crunchyroll. The update comes this week as Crunchyroll announced its brand new partnership with Walmart. It turns out more than 2,400 locations of Walmart are going to stock anime merchandise from Crunchyroll shortly, so it will be easier than ever to collect your fandom. Crunchyroll's availability at Walmart will make anime more accessible than ever, inviting even more fans into this dynamic and exciting world. Mitchell Berger, SVP of Global Commerce at Crunchyroll, shared in a new statement, this launch reinforces our commitment to spreading the love of anime to an even wider audience and we can't wait to see the joy it brings to fans this holiday season according to the new report participating walmart locations will open their own crunchyroll fan shops these areas will include everything from exclusive manga volumes vinyl soundtracks and other merchandise walmart will also stock physical subscription cards for crunchyroll you'll be able to purchase cards for one month three months 
12 month subscriptions ahead of the holidays again i've seen all of that so they're not the cap and this is legit so if you need an easy gift idea for the holidays these cards may do the trick stuffed with top selling goods walmart's crunchyroll fan shops mark the latest ways anime has entered mainstream pop culture from hot topic to tj maxx you can find anime just about everywhere these days which i ain't gonna lie it's such a far cry from when i first started heavily getting into anime over a decade ago now back in 20 or 2009 like um you know you couldn't find pretty much anything anime related minus dragon ball z dvd so that was pretty much the extent of it that and like maybe some overpriced bleach and naruto dvds which was like i remember the first set of bleach was running for like 60 70 dollars for like what was it 13 episodes 20 it was freaking crazy and i remember thinking to myself damn i would like to check it out but that's a hefty hefty price tag so to go from those days to where they have i mean i just saw yesterday while i was at walmart they had demon slayer figures they were a little bit cheaper but they had uh Andro inosuke zanitsu uh they had just everything man i was just shocked they had crunchyroll subscription cards all sorts of stuff and again it's just a great time to be an anime and manga fan i mean for crying out loud i saw they had sanji from one piece and his brother plushies like it's it's astronomically crazy and so different and it makes me wish that when i first got into anime all of this was readily available because i would have been having a blast i ain't gonna lie i mean it's dope to see it now but considering i bought like millions and millions of things of anime and manga merchandise it's like it's cool i would have been more excited back when i was first getting into anime but salute to everybody that gets to enjoy the fruits of anime's uprise labor <laughs> moving forward jujutsu kaisen staff blasts the anime's recent episode leaks. I didn't know there was episode leaks. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is still on a roll, and that means the anime fandom cannot look away from Sukuna these days. After going live this past summer, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is well into the Shibuya Incident arc, and its latest episode puts Sukuna on the spot. It seems the deadly arc is about to get all that more intense, but right now, it seems the anime's drama is centered elsewhere thanks to some recent episode leaks. If you're not familiar with Jujutsu Kaisen, well, there's a slight problem playing in the community. Just like a number of popular titles before it, JJK has a devoted ring of leakers from the manga to anime no content is safe from those pages but a recent leak of episode 39 definitely rubbed one director the wrong way Taken to Twitter, the director of episode 39 posted a note addressing those who leaked unaired content online. People who post time code footage because they are shameless, well, I've already DM'd them. But to those who give footage to leak accounts, please die F you. The director Takao Abo Isuda wrote, oh my god, I'm not gonna lie, I did not, <laughs> wow, he, holy smokes, that's yeah <laughs> as you can imagine the episode director was hardly pleased with the leaks regarding episode 39 over on social media leak pages were given footage of toji's fight that was undimmed due to broadcast regulations and that was just the start the production footage was hardly finished and it did not take long for people to start hunting the leaks source some animators like amphibole were wrongfully accused of the ordeal and had to prove their innocence before the jjk witch hunt and sadly there's no telling if these leaks will stop anytime soon over the past Last couple of hours people have accused okay so this is from the one person that was accused uh yeah people are really going at him from discord to twitter all sorts of places for now the best fans can do is support jujutsu kaisen through its official venues you can find the anime streaming over on crunchyroll as well as hulu so for those wanting more info on jjk you can read the story's official synopsis and in all honesty first of all salute to that <laughs> uh director for saying how he feels a lot of people in the industry and in general online a lot of people be feeling about that way about about various things and unfortunately you know because of the way society is it's like ah he's getting mad we got him uh no salute to this dude for saying how he genuinely feels i'm sure it's not going to stop if anything it might encourage trolls to keep it going and leakers and all that jazz but man said straight up and down yo you're playing with me homie <laughs> yeah um let me know how you feel about this situation Part of me feels like because I've been seeing leaks for many and many a times and, you know, I've reported on leaks and stuff like that after they've been well out. But I've never been the one, whether it be, of course, I'm not an animator to hand over footage and I've never been somebody that is, you know, directly getting from a source. I usually report on stuff as it makes its rounds through social media. It's already out there. Yeah, when it comes at the very least, it leaks. I don't like to be a, a news breaker of leaks, so to speak. I usually like to break news when it's genuinely supposed to be news. And unfortunately, stuff like that 
that happens and it's a shame but i think a lot of this is going on because anime has gotten so expansive that they've been essentially either a there's the drama within studio mappa where a lot of the animators are basically sick and tired of their situation and they've been essentially told to sign ndas so this could very well come from those people that they're just like okay i'm not allowed to talk about what's happening i'm gonna screw over production so there's that possibility i mean Again, this is strictly just me throwing out theories. For all we know, this guy could be a mastermind and he leaked it himself because he hates Studio Mappa. You know what I'm saying? Not that that's the case by any means and I'm not accusing anything. I'm just saying we don't know to what extent all of this is causing, so to speak, because there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. So it could be homie. Could be one of the freelance animators because that's another big thing that they're freelancing people from all sorts of countries. And how do you trust somebody like, you know, you've never talked to, never interviewed from another part of the world to handle stuff like this. So who knows? A lot of that is the case, though, with animators in foreign countries that are handing over leaks and stuff like that. But it's a shame all around. And yeah, salute to uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and that director. Moving forward, the Seven Deadly Sins Four Nights of the Apocalypse manga ends the first part and takes a one week hiatus i should have reported this more with the other manga ending stories but it says here this year's 49th issue of kodansha's weekly shonen magazine published the final chapter from the first part of nakaba suzuki's seven deadly sins four nights of the apocalypse on wednesday the magazine also announced that the manga will take a one week break and will return in this year's 51st issue on november 22nd with a colored opening page and i got to imagine maybe there's going to be some sort of time skip there Maybe they're going to do something big because if it ended its quote unquote first part, I don't think Seven Deadly Sins ever did anything like that because again, this is a sequel from the same author of the Seven Deadly Sins or a sequel spinoff. So I'm, I'm very curious as to what's happening there. I just, I need them because I see, I think Netflix is like teasing that, yo, we got it. It's coming or whatnot. I need them to release this already, okay? I really want to watch this. I'm so upset that we're having to wait and we can't watch this weekly when I'm excited for it. <laughs> I want to watch this already. I got volume one of the manga. I read some of those chapters back when they were first coming out. Like, I'm ready for the Four Nights of the Apocalypse. Moving forward, Katakawa aims to establish more wholly owned anime studios katakawa reported on thursday in its earnings results for the quarter ending on september 30th that it aims to establish more wholly owned anime studios under its corporate group umbrella katakawa is already a major owner of the anime studios Ingi, Gamer Rebirth, Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out, and Kinemi Citrus, My Happy Marriage, The Rising of the Shield Hero, and it established Studio Kadan, Gamera Rebirth, with 97.5% investment in June of 2021. However, Kadokawa reported in its results that it aims to establish 100% owned anime studios. It's adding Rising Bull, a high-end studio with Eureka 7 director Tomoki Kyoda, this past September, Katakawa Studio plans are part of its mid-term management strategy to strengthen its animation production capabilities over the next four fiscal years. Besides establishing new studios, the company aims to bolster its existing anime studios, acquire other studios, and enter into alliances with other companies. Katakawa has been investing in 40 or more anime titles a year, but it only produces about five in-house. It aims to eventually increase the titles produced in-house to 20 a year and also aims to increase the number of seasons and episodes per anime title so yeah it seems like katakawa was just trying to expand and get more in-house i didn't know yeah well they have the rising of the shield hero they got a few gems under their belt maybe they'll uh, the problem with katakawa is they're very very uh hands-on with their stuff like I, I if i'm not mistaken i think it was a long fight to get uh future diary like released on blu-ray because they were holding on to the rights so there was like only a dvd release for a long while uh so katakawa i think they did the same thing with dead man wonderland now i think it took a while to get blu-ray so I'm not the biggest fan of katakawa but salute to them trying to expand then we got this astronomical story that i'm like who the hell is buying this because apparently code geass is getting a 550 dollars collector's blu-ray edition that i'm not buying and i don't see anybody that i know personally buying this one i already got the dvds of it and i'm fine with that but code geass is one of those anime series you can never forget crafted by sunrise and clamp code geass still reigns as one of the anime's most complex titles since its launch in 2006 geass has crafted its own legacy and new fans will stumble upon its episodes to this day and now fans of Code Geass better watch their wallet as a Blu-ray collector set is on its way with an eye-popping 
price tag. The update comes courtesy of Crunchyroll as the company is getting ready to drop the expensive collector's edition. It turns out Code Geass bundle is slated to debut December 5th as pre-orders are now available. And while its $550 USD price tag may shock you, a ton of goodies come in this collector's purchase. Does it come to like blocks of gold? Like I can see blocks of gold making me purchase this. We mean it when we say it's been coming to this. Three years were spent selecting over 30 pieces of official art, crafting an original designer inspired pattern and reviewing the anime tirelessly until we were satisfied with the accuracy of the Lancelot key and chest set. And to ensure this collection shares the lasting legacy of Code Geass, we housed it all inside a display box that serves as an elegant storage case for years to come. Packed with 50 episodes and 4 movies, this Code Geass Blu-ray set is a monster. Fans who nab one of these editions will get everything from audio commentary to voice actor interviews and original artwork. Pre-orders for the Geass Collector's Edition are available while supplies last, so if you have been waiting to nab the anime's definitive home release, well, here it is. And of course, if you're not familiar with it, you can check out the anime, but I'm going to tell you 110%, unless you got it like that and, you know, if you got it, flaunt it, that Brooklyn bullsh, we on it, I wouldn't recommend purchasing this. I, I feel like you can easily go watch the episodes, whatever they're going to offer you. It's probably cool little trinkets or whatnot, but $550 in this climate, I don't think this is a smart investment. You could easily watch the anime in many different places. And in general, $550 is ridiculous. Like, Code Geass is one of the best anime out there, but come on, son. Come on. Come on. But then again, salute. And you never know. Maybe it's actually worth it. Who knows? Moving forward, very interesting little uh, tidbit on the Nintendo Switch, a little gaming related stuff. Because uh, apparently Nintendo Switch has passed 130 million consoles sold worldwide. Hot off the heels of Nintendo's best quarter in its 133 year history. Wait, Nintendo been around 133 years? I did not know that it's been around that long. The Kyoto-based company revealed its second quarter earnings for this year ending March 2024 today, showing that the giant cannot be stopped. Nintendo has increased its earning forecast for the year to be closer on par with 2023's earnings report, even with the expectations of lower hardware and software sales. But that's not the biggest milestone news for the company. Nintendo updated its Switch sales figures and announced that the console has sold 132.46 million units over all its variants making it the third console in history to pass 130 million units sold after the ps2 and nintendo ds so oh wow yeah it has surpassed the nintendo wii which nintendo wii was the biggest thing nintendo had for the longest time um outside of the ds apparently nintendo had previously noted that it expects to sell 15 million units this fiscal year and looks to be on track with the holiday season approaching the gaming company also increases software related sales up to 185 million units from the previously estimated 180 million units another milestone for nintendo is that its latest entry in the pikmin franchise pikmin 4 is now the highest selling single release pikmin game to date with 2.61 million copies sold since it was released july 21st the second highest selling single release pikmin game is pikmin 3 deluxe with 2.4 million as of december 2022 overall nintendo has increased its earning forecasts for this year across the board by around 17 percent thanks to strong software sales in the first quarter mostly due to the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom selling 19.5 million copies in less than six months god damn the mammoth success of the super mario brothers movie and the greatly weakened yen which nintendo has changed the internal assumed exchange rate from a dollar to 130 yen in the first quarter to us one dollar to 140 yen this is shown by nintendo having 21.2 percent increase in net sales over the last two quarters compared to last year though nintendo notes that most hardware sales are now of the nintendo switch oled model which sells for more but also costs more to produce than the other two models and god damn dog nintendo raking in the big bucks salute to nintendo moving forward a little update in the gaming world for kuroko no basket kuroko's basketball street rivals 3d model game launches november 16th the official twitter account for five cross kuroko no basket street rivals 3d smartphone game based on the anime adaptation of kuroko no basket manga revealed last tuesday that the game's release will be november 16th and the game players can develop different characters such as tetsuya kuroko and taiga kaga and play intense basketball matches yeah shout outs to kuroko no basket i don't know if i'd play that game i had one kuroko no basket game that i imported from japan for like the 3ds or something like that but eh, shout outs to kuroko i would love for them to make more of it but yeah moving forward 
Pokemon Horizons may be delaying its global launch. When it comes to Pokemon Horizons, the latest anime season has proven that Liko and Roy are far different trainers than Ash Ketchum. As it stands, the pair isn't focused on becoming the greatest trainers of all time, but rather fleeing the advances of the villainous explorers while harboring mysterious artifacts that house some serious power. So they're not trying to be the best like no one ever was? To catch them wasn't their real test? To train them isn't their cause? No. <laughs> Encountering some powerful allies in the rising Volt Tacklers, Roy and Liko have been worthy successors to Ash Ketchum so far and might be leading the anime adaptation for years to come. In the recent press release, the Pokemon Company in France revealed that Horizons would arrive in the country in 2024. While this doesn't necessarily mean that the same will be true for North America and Netflix, it hints more at the idea that Liko and Roy will hit the West next year. While the first English dubbed episode was shown at this year's Comic-Con earlier this year, North American fans might not see this installment in 2023. And of course, if you aren't familiar with Pokemon Horizons, here's how the Pokemon Company describes the series that leaves Ash Ketchum behind and focuses on new trainers Liko and Roy. A new adventure begins in the vast world of Pokemon. Upon her arrival at Indigo Academy, a young girl named Liko receives her first Pokemon partner, Hosacha. Very quickly, she is pursued by the Explorers, a mysterious group determined, basically like Team Rocket, determined to seize the pendant she wears around her neck. However, Liko is not alone. Freed, Captain Pikachu, and the other rising Volt Tacklers offer her protection aboard their airship. Meanwhile, a young boy named Roy dreams of becoming a Pokemon trainer, unaware of the secret hidden in his ancient Pokeball. As Liko and Roy and the rising Volt Tacklers soar to new horizons, what kind of discoveries await them? And I'm not a fan. I did not know that they abandoned the trying to be the best aspect is like so we're not trying to inspire people anymore to be the best like no one ever was okay <laughs> yeah moving forward for fans of toilet bound hanako kun's anime i got some great news it says here toilet bound hanako kun anime gets second season the official twitter account for the tv anime adaptation of iro ida's toilet bound hanako kun manga announced on thursday that the anime is getting a second season the account also revealed that the short tv anime of iro ida's after school hanako spin-off manga will get a four episode sequel in fall 2024 the official website had announced last december that the anime is re starting interesting i know my niece is a big fan of toilet bound and she's been waiting for more anime so i know she's gonna be hyped and i i'm pretty sure based off what i saw about sales uh toilet bound is very popular as well so getting a little sequel there i think fans are gonna be very much so overjoyed about this thing and the after school hanako kun anime premiered on tbs on october 12th crunchyroll streamed the anime same day but at 2 p.m et etc etc so Salute to Toilet Bound and the fandom getting a little bit more. Moving forward, a story I wanted to cover because, you know, every once in a while I want to talk about stuff other than just anime, manga, and things like that. Because uh, it's, it's fascinating to me. Pentagon's new UFO chief is already resigning. Remember, like, you know, this last year or two, they've been talking about aliens and all sorts of stuff. Well, it says here, Sean Kirkpatrick, the first director of the Pentagon's all-domain anomaly resolution office, is on his way out the door. Tuesday, Kirkpatrick revealed that he's retiring from the Department of Defense's public-facing UFO research office, ending a year-long stint atop the group. Kirkpatrick was initially set to retire from the Pentagon last year, but deferred his retirement to take his AARO leadership position. I'm ready to move on. I have accomplished everything I said I was going to do, Kirkpatrick said in a new interview with Politico. According to the website, Kirkpatrick's deputy, Tim Phillips, will serve as acting head of AARO until Pentagon officials hire a permanent replacement. Dr. Kirkpatrick has served the American people with honesty and integrity, tackling an incredibly difficult mission to explain the unknown. Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hicks added in a statement, his commitment to transparency with the United States Congress and the American public on UAP leaves a legacy the department will carry forward as AARO continues its mission. Kirkpatrick has been in the news much of the year with the public's renewed interest in UFOs and UAP or unidentified anomalous phenomena he most recently made headlines after firing back at the house oversight committee after its highly publicized hearing on uap earlier this summer i cannot let yesterday's hearing pass without sharing how insulting it was to the officers of the department of defense and intelligence community who chose to join aaro many with not unreasonable anxieties about the career risk this would entail kirkpatrick wrote in the letter since then kirkpatrick has confirmed the authenticity of the letter which was initially visible to only the official connections on the professional social network they are truth seekers as am i but you certainly would not get that impression from yesterday's hearing at the hearing former intelligence official david grush testified 
the United States government is in possession of non-human biologics. As I've stated publicly already, biologics came with some of these recoveries, Groot said in a response to a question from Rep. Nancy Mace. When pressed on if these biologics were human or extraterrestrial, the official confirmed non-human biologics are what have been recovered from certain UFO crashes so they're definitely pushing forward even further that aliens are amongst us yeah they've been amongst us for quite some time if you know you know is what he's basically saying i guess moving forward we got some spy family stuff we got spy family sales chart shout outs to joe's underscore k yet again all the way up to volume 12 you could definitely see that volume 10 was the peak that did one point oh my god it did like what one point maybe to five million somewhere around that ballpark and it seems as though it's on its decline right now and that big bump that happened for volume 10 was with the anime so the anime started in volume 12 i guess volume 13 will tell a tale on whether the anime is still helping out with sales or whatnot volume 13 14 around that ballpark but sales are still astronomical doing well over 900,000 and probably in the ballpark of a million nothing to scoff at by any means considering it's 12 volumes in and averaging roughly a million a volume like ever since volume 9 you can see it's just been up up and away uh salute to spy family a very wholesome manga uh with a lot of success to boot but we also have an update here it says crunchyroll opened spy family cold white film in north american theaters in 2024 that's what i wanted to know because i want to see that movie with my kids crunchyroll and sony pictures entertainment announced on monday that they have acquired the north american and select global theatrical rights for spy family code white anime film and will open the film in north america in 2024 the companies will also screen the film in latin america australia new zealand and select territories in europe including austria and benelux france germany italy and nordics portugal spain and switzerland screenings will be available in both japanese audio with english subtitles and with an english dub and they describe the film as he's a spy she's an assassin together lloyd and Yor keep their double lives to themselves while pretending to be the perfect family however their adopted daughter anya a telepath knows both of their exciting secrets unbeknownst to them while under the guise of taking his family on a weekend winter getaway lloyd's attempt to make progress on his current mission operation strix proves difficult when anya mistakenly gets involved and triggers events that threaten world peace this movie is going to be so fun i feel like spy family gives me that vibe of a movie would give me somewhat of the appreciation i get for a detective conan movie i would love for spy family to go on as long as detective conan it could very well be one of those series because you know there's a small selective series that have been going on for a very long time and people still love and admire them like detective conan one piece etc but in particular being episodic feeling like detective conan i feel spy family could be something that stays around for a long time uh that's if the author wants to because we do know that initially this wasn't the idea that the author had for the type of manga he wanted right moving forward quick funny update in the world of gaming spider-man a viral spider-man 2 glitch brings naruto into the game spider-man has never had his own official anime adaptation before though he has appeared in anime series focusing on the avengers in the past while we've never seen peter parker or miles morales actually meet naruto <laughs> naruto we have seen some unique marvel anime crossovers in the past in a special one shot spider-man teamed up with the avengers to take on the titans of attack on titan i remember that that was many years ago but that was so cool while not featuring spider-man the recent deadpool manga deadpool samurai saw everyone's favorite merc with a mouth teaming up with my hero academia's all might to take down the mad titan thanos thanks to a new glitch or discovered in uh, marvel spider-man 2 players were able to see peter parker mimic the ninjas of the naruto franchise the naruto run has easily become a fan favorite meme of the shonen franchise making its way to numerous events and moments in time while we may never see the seventh hokage running alongside the friendly neighborhood spider-man in new york city this is the next best thing and they have like a little clip of it uh and i'll be honest with you one of the things it's hard to say that this is a naruto thing because that run i've seen that run before naruto so, and people have told me from the stuff that I saw before Naruto, they saw it and stuff before that. Because I remember my first experience with seeing the quote unquote Naruto run was in Dragon Ball Z with Team Gohan running with Goten. I remember he ran like that and it made me want to run like that as a kid, as corny and cringy as that sounds. And then I've seen and met people that have told me in older anime than even Dragon Ball Z, that same run was made. Because apparently, I think animation wise, it's a lot easier to do with just having their arms behind them. That way, you just got to move their legs and their arms just you make maybe the shirt flaps move from the wind or whatnot so it's technically not the naruto run although it was dubbed that um, because generations before that there was people and characters running just like that that's more of an anime technique cliche for running opposed to the naruto run but regardless salute to that and i would love a spider-man x naruto 
collaboration. That'd be fire. Moving forward, we kind of reported on this recently, um, but there's a new article about the Berserk fan anime. It says here, Berserk the Black Swordsman fan animation aspires to be everything the 2016 anime wasn't. I happen to have a fondness for the 2016 anime. Uh, online animation group Studio Eclipse announced in early October that its team has begun pre-production on a Berserk the Black Swordsman fan animation. The staff of the project expressly stated the animation will not include the golden age of Kentaro Miro's manga and will focus on the Black Swordsman arc. The project will include adaptation of the stories that have been neglected of this medium. Considering that many fans felt the 2016-2017 anime adaptation left much to be desired, fans are rightfully excited to see what an adaptation of the Black Swordsman arc for fans and by fans might look like. The studio has stated the adaptation will be wholly 2D with no 3D CGI used for character animation uh while the 2016 one had it and you know they have some character designs and it's all fine and dandy but i'm still going to stand on based on everything i've seen and everything i know about animation a lot of times these people that they attempt these projects they don't realize everything that they're up against one big thing is that hello you're not supposed to be doing this at any given point the original uh, copyright owners can shut you down and sue you to another planet you know what i'm saying send cease and desist and there you go on top of the fact that dog you're not going to be able to do a big 25 episode run of 100 episodes. You're just not unless you have a million people that have, or not a million people, but you have a very big team of people that don't need to work. They could just focus on this. It's not going to happen. At best, you'll get one or two episodes out and you'll be gone with the wind. And if I'm wrong, by golly, that'd be great because I'd love a 2D Berserk anime, but it, I'm not wrong. This is way too of a tall order and salute to them for trying. Maybe this could be something cool for their animation resume, but you're not supposed to be doing this. They're not going to allow you to get too far, especially if you get critical acclaim. They're going to be like, yo, that's cool and all. Shut that down now. The same way they did the Anime Wars whole series with Goku versus Saitama that Mastar Media was doing years back. They shut him down with Cease and Desist. They're going to do the same thing if this Berserk anime gets critical acclaim and popular or whatnot. But I'll give them an A for trying. Moving forward, Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomino turns heads with sobering new interview. Mobile Suit Gundam first hit the scene in 1979 and creator Yoshiyuki Tomino has stuck with the franchise for decades since first bringing the mech franchise to life. Recently, the popular entry, The Witch from Mercury, came to an end and one of the storylines that brought in the most money for the franchise to date. With the mech franchise continuing to work on new projects in the future, a recent interview with Tomino had a number of fans turning their heads at his declarations. Mobile Suit Gundam is far and away the most popular anime mech franchise to date, not just thanks to its anime series and anime movies, but the various statues that have popped up around Japan in the past. Currently, Japan is the only country in the world that has its own walking Gundam that has the ability to create steps under its owner's power. While the walking Gundam isn't taking flight and firing energy weapons, the statue is a perfect recreation of the popular anime mech. One of the questions that Tomino fielded was what he would do as director if he was an adult, noting that the Gundam originator was now over 80 years old and was preparing for his own death. Such questions are nonsense for people who are over 80 years old. Because I have already started preparing for my death, I have no control over my body. I am thinking about what I can do to die without suffering. Tomino also described his thoughts on the key essence of film. What is the basis of film? Recently, I finally understood. It's a love movie. In other words, it's just a story about people. After all, the general public only sees people's stories. For example, when I look at Agatha Christie's well-written mysteries, I find that they are forced to depict human relationships and are made as romantic films. Don't ever go wrong with that. Yoshiyuki also took the opportunity to state that a decision was made early on in the franchise to specifically not include any alien enemies, meaning that the Gundam universe would only focus on mankind. The important thing about Gundam is that there are no alien enemies. Up until then, all the enemies of giant robots have been aliens. For some reason, from the child's point of view, the enemies were more likely to be aliens. It's an adult logic because it's easy to understand. Isn't this an insult to children? I didn't want to make fun of children, so I made it 20 meters in Gundam. It's the same size as a fighter jet. Make it a one-seater vehicle. Make it a one-person weapon. That's why even though it's humanoid, there's still a person in the cockpit. I persuaded them. It would have been nice if it had aired and gotten good ratings, but it wasn't that good, so it was canceled. That's the reality. Well, salute to Tomino. Very somber sounding words from the man. Okay, people, and let's slow things down with the weekly Shonen Jump author comments. And first up, we got Yuto Suzuki Sakamoto Days. In chapter 140, Kanaguri's eyes had healed, but that was an error. I'll give him an eye patch or something. Damn, they're 140 chapters deep in Sakamoto Days. This is so different from what Shonen Jump was back in the days. We're 140 chapters in, and this still doesn't have an anime. That's 
crazy. We got Kagura Bachi, Takuru Hokazono. When I walk around at night while listening to the soundtrack of the Batman, I become Batman. <laughs> Dr. Stone's Richiro Inagaki. Long time no see. Sorry for this irregular serialization. Please look forward to the next chapter. And we also got Boichi from Dr. Stone. I'm so hyped after receiving the best story of my life. Please enjoy these three chapters. Because yeah, there's some three chapter uh, continuation of Dr. Stone. Uh, the elusive samurai Yusei Masui. I choked on some vodka and thought I was about to die. My future cause of death will likely be aspiration pneumonia. Ooh, why would you manifest that? Oh, God. Uh, Kill Blue by Tadatoshi Fujimaki, also the author of Kuroko no Basket. Please, no more paper straws. During every meeting, the straw falls apart. That's horrible. Uh, Eichiro to create a One Piece. Blown away that Leo-san from Zoon is the person from La Okaki. I'll never forget that comedy team. Blue Box Koji Miura. The dried scallops at 7-Eleven are really good. They are sweet, salty, and low calories. There's not many 7-Elevens around where I'm at. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's Gaga Kutami. I learned that the editor I had kept waiting a long time was a black belt in karate, and everyone at the studio started to get really nervous. We got Hitsuji Gandaira, Mission Yozaku the Family. I saw Once Upon a Studio. Can't believe I got to see a new Disney Robin Hood project this year. We got Akane Barashi's Yuki Suenaga. Sorry for all the embarrassing errors recently. I'll do my best to eliminate them. I'll double check. Salute to homie. Two on Ice, Elk Itsumo. It's gone over, I've gone over 400 days of studying Polish. I want to become fluent. Oh, Polish, I'm sorry. Undead Unluck, Yoshifumi Tozuka. My landlord went to the sushi collaboration event at Kappa Sushi. Thank you. I want to go too. Mama Yuyu by Yoshihiko Hayashi. I get the most excited about how I start drawing really efficient lines as the deadline looms. So fun. <laughs> Nue's Exorcist, Kota Kawai. When I watch YouTube shorts on Kenta Shokudo, my stomach frequently starts growling. Cypher Academy, Yuji Iwasaki. I listen to Bara Iro no Hibi, Nanto Kanare, and Hiro while working. So I feel really strong now. Me and Roboko Shuhei Miyazaki. I saw a gang parade live. I was blown away by the amount of crazy exercise they do during the performance. Martial Master Asumi Akawada. At the cafe where I do my storyboards, I can see my daughter returning from school. And it gives me strength. That's dope. Uh, I said Gil Ikuhachia. Seeing people in costume in the city is so fun. But seeing a no face from Spirit Away at night is bad for my heart. Salute to homie. And the Ichinose Family Deadly Sins by Tizen5. Thank you so much to everyone who read it, sent fan mail, and supported me. I really hope that because it seems that it was ended on its own accord and it seems like it's a completed story. I really hope this gets an anime adaptation. I'm curious how they're going to handle this. Then we got from other magazine. I think this is from their monthly series, if I'm not mistaken. We got Twin Star Exorcist Yoshiaki Sukeno. I broke my right hand. That's not good at all. Hopefully he's left-handed. If not, there's going to be a big break. Or maybe there was a big break. I don't know. Seraph of the End, Daisuke Furuya. Due to the influence of Shogi champion Sota Fuji, I bought a Shogi strategy book. <laughs> Blue Exodus, Kazue Kato. I missed last month due to COVID-19. It's scary that I still have symptoms two months later. That is very scary. Salute and God bless. I hope you get better, homie. Uh, Shohei Shotan, Takeshi Obata, aka the artist of Death Note. I went to France and Belgium with Asakura Sensei. It was a blast. Uh, and last but not least, we got World Triggers Daisuke Ashihara. I'll be taking next month off to improve the medical issues with my neck. I'd like to focus on non-manga deadlines and do a bunch of stuff. Salute to homie, always still going strong despite all of the medical conditions he has obtained from doing manga. And we'll close this bad boy off with the top 50 best selling manga of the week, courtesy of Jose underscore K. We got at number 50, Four Nights of the Apocalypse Volume 1. Okay, hold up. Yeah, I think this is a goof. Whoops. I, this is the latest volume. <laughs> 13 days did 45k. Oh, man, that's such a shame. I thought volume one hit. Yo, Joseph underscore K. You did us wrong right there. You got us excited for nothing. But it's okay because you provide this every week. So we're going to let that slide, homie. We're going to let it slide. Appreciate you to the max regardless. Uh, we got Jujutsu Kaisen, volume 23. 118 days on sale. Uh, 1.4 million with almost 14k this week at number 45. We got So So No Free Air in volumes 8 and 9. And 410 and 500 days, it has done 432 and 440. So, so no fair and such an enjoyable, interesting type of story to say the least. Cooking Papa, I'm always fascinated seeing that. 160, volume 167, doing 15K in seven days. Uh, then we got So, so no fair in volumes 10, 7, 6. 
uh, five, two, all on the charts doing anywhere from what? About 15K to about 16K, all the way up to place 31. Then we got places 30 through 21 with Souls to No Fair in volumes 1, 4, 3, and 11. Yet again on the charts, with 11 being the latest volume in 45 days, doing 357K. The anime is definitely doing back catalog numbers for it. It's definitely selling the back volumes. Love to see it. And also at number 24, we got Tokyo Avengers, a letter from Keisuke Baji, volume 4, in 13 days, 62.8K. Then we got places 20 through 11 with Goblin Slayer Side Story Year 1 Volume 11 in 5 days 20.9 what else we got on here anything recognizable nothing I'm really I'm sure somebody's gonna say dog why you didn't mention Metalist I love Metalist like the art looks cool on Metalist sure but that's usually how it goes I won't mention something be like, oh my god how could you do that Tim what's wrong and then we got places 10 through 11. Top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10. What did you eat yesterday? Volume 22 limited edition. 34K in seven days. <laughs> I can never get enough of the name of that. We got Detective Conan volume 104. In 12 days, 227K with almost 60K this week. Spy Family volume 12. In 26 days, 950K with 60.5 this week. Oh my God, almost a million in less than a month. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 24, the latest volume in 26 days, has done a million seventy-three k with 67k this week. Loving Yamada at level 999, Volume 8 in 7 days, 106.8, not bad. And at number 1, What Did You Eat Yesterday, Volume 22 in 7 days, 93.9. And I am really waiting for Oricon to have access to the digital sales because all of these numbers are going to skyrocket. The fact that not a single manga did 100k plus... Of the top 50 of this week those digital sales need to be included somebody get a hold of the digital sales i get it that the individual companies hold on to those sales they should be able to you know what i'm saying or they should give those sales numbers up those sales figures so we can see what's really going on with manga but that's all i have for this one i'm tim thanks for watching and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day. Peace. And you guys just watched another episode of For Never News. Have an awesome day. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell and check out my album, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, out now on all streaming platforms and on my website, timroosevelt.com. You can pre-order my upcoming projects, my vinyls, all of that good stuff. I appreciate any and all support. Thanks for watching. And as always, people, peace in. It's been another episode. You already know. You'll love it. Okay, I should go now. Stop talking, Tim. Let them leave. <laughs> have an awesome day. Peace. Thought it would have been. Wish it would have been Acting like I'm fine It's getting harder to pretend I said Thought you would have been Wish you would have been Maybe I was wrong It was me all along